like the quietest DEF CON ever. It's De Hello, welcome to DEF CON 20. That was still pretty weak ass sauce there. Come on, one more time. Welcome to DEF CON 20. I would like to point out that officially the con doesn't start until now. So everything that happened before this was just something in your imagination. It didn't actually happen. So we don't actually start DEF CON until Friday. You guys are all like, shit. How many of you have seen people carrying these little cameras around? Raise your hand. How many of you know what these are? So we're doing a DEF CON documentary that Russ is actually heading up. And you'll see people walking around with these. If you don't want to be filmed, just tell them. But this is going to be footage that we're going to give to Jason Scott for making the official DEF CON documentary. So I think that's kind of cool, right? Give Russ a hand on that one. Woo! Yeah, Russ! I like me. We're not seeing a signal on the VGA. I told you they didn't like the monkey thing. We need tech support. It's a Mac. Are my VMs up and running? It should be working. Pass out printed slides. It worked yesterday. Yeah, printed slides. You know what? I don't even need the slides if you guys don't care, but then you don't get to see the cool pictures. And they're all like, oh. Hey, you're more than welcome. Have you, <laughs> Have you tried turning it on and off again? I got a hot ear. Is it plugged in? How many of you guys are from somewhere outside of the United States? Holy crap, that's awesome. Give, dude, that's awesome. We are an international community. He's seriously going through the cables right now. No. That's awesome. You didn't even phase him. You know, no, they're not. Neither are you. I just unplug and plug back in again. So. <laughs> <laughs> It'll steal my soul. <laughs> we are trying again. How many of you liked the badges last year? Well, okay. How many of you liked the badges this year? Now I want every single one of you to write an email to Jeff Moss and say that. <laughs> yes, no? Spartacus? So, okay, well, I'm just going to start going, and if we get this, this, uh, this going, that's great, and if not, uh, Russ can do interpretive dance or something for what we're talking about. So, I'm going to describe to you what are on these slides. <laughs> Slide one, DEFCON logo. Slide one. So... I think I could do one of these numbers. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lost and I'm a hacker. <laughs> so this is my lame attempt at some humor at 5.30 in the morning last night when I was putting these slides together for you. So, I was just going to cover some general stuff. <laughs> My laptop's totally going to eat the ground, I know it. So, um, what you're wearing around your neck, for those of you who haven't read it in the program, looked at it on the conference DVD, looked at it on the website, talked to somebody else, etc., etc., is a chip that has eight 32-bit cores on the same die. So what that means is, how many of you know what a pain in the ass doing something like interrupts is, R, B, okay? You don't have... You don't have to deal with interrupts with this chip because fuck you, I'm just going to launch another processor. <laughs> so anybody that's done robotics or subsumption architecture programming or anything like that, you know, screw that, I'm just going to load up another chip. You'll notice that you all got a VGA header and a PS2 set of PS2 connectors. That's kind of an homage to the old school stuff because this is DEF CON 20, it's kind of retro. Um, as I said in the program, there's already a Commodore 64 emulator that's been written for these, a Z80 emulator's been written. There's all kinds of stuff out on the web for this chip. Um, Parallax is the company that actually did the fabrication because we did all of our fabrication in the great United States this year. I have 
have a USB key, but Neil has it. Because it has all of the answers to the badge challenge on it. Don't kill Neil. Um, uh, so, yes, as you might imagine, it did cost us a bit more to produce these badges because they were made in the United States, but they were made in Rockland, California. Uh, are any of the Parallax folks in the audience right now? Uh, stand up, you guys. So, the, i got to tell you about this crew. So, I'm going to tell you a little story, and then you guys are going to clap again at about like nine times the volume for, for those folks over there. I have to tell you the nightmarish schedule we were under to get this done. I have never seen a team work harder than those guys over at Parallax did. Uh, uh, Ken uh, put stuff together, Ken, Jessica, all those guys. We had the biggest set of just, I'm, I'm trying to be politically correct about this, we had just things come at us from out of the blue that we just did not expect. We got the boards spun up, fabricated, dealt with problems that we had to deal with, and still got everything. The badges showed up yes, yesterday, or the day before, I lost a day because of sleep. Um, basically, we got them here at like 3 o'clock the day that they had to be here. So with that nightmare schedule, they, were, they, they literally loaded them on a truck in California and drove them here. So give them a hand because they really deserve it. So I, I do have a little bit of a confession to make. I am a former employee of that company. Several years ago, it's been quite a while. I have no financial interest in the entire thing. In fact, uh, Ken called me up on, uh, on Skype one day and, uh, and started asking me random questions. I was like, Ken, you're filming me, aren't you? And he's like, yeah. Um, he wanted to show that the motivation behind this was uh, a love of... of uh, a love of this industry and a love of you guys and, and, and this, uh, this community, it wasn't financially driven. Like, I have no financial interest in this at all. In fact, for those of you who know me, I'm out of pocket every year for DEF CON, like five, six thousand dollars of my own money. Like, that's, just, that's me giving back to the community, so. I'm looking over at my notes so I can remember what the hell to say. So, oh. So unlike the past, you don't need a JTAG header or anything like that. You've got USB on the badge. You guys can program it. You all have probably read at this point. You can load the ROM, or, or the EEPROM, or you can load uh, code directly into RAM. So you can actually experiment with code without blowing away the game code that's in there. Speaking of the game code, um, how many of you last year remember the hired actor that we had that was helping with the, the, the game? Yeah, that's John Williams. He's actually also a programmer, and he wrote most of the libraries that are open source that were used for the badge code. So he's not able to be here tonight, but can you guys, for the purpose of the film, can you give John a big hand because he was an instrumental in this. I think it's really illustrative of how diverse this community really is, the fact that we've got, you know, like this professional actor from Hollywood writing code. I think that's kind of cool. By the way, he plays like, uh, what does he play, like JFK, like on the Discovery Channel, whenever they do reenactments, that's him. You can be like, that dude wrote DEF CON code. <laughs> so here you would be seeing some early design picks. By the way, uh, Ken also graciously did a write-up of some of the available tools that you guys could use even now when you heard the conference and put those up on the Parallax forums. If you go jump on the Parallax forums and see that, Right up that he did, you can probably see a lot of these same pictures since obviously not everyone can see my tiny laptop up here. Sure they can. <laughs> Just pan it around. <laughs> Hold it on. <laughs> Zoom into it. So the, the, the actual art that is the bottom half of the, uh, the badges was done as vector art by myself. Um, with the exception of the goon badge, which was done by Ellen, who is in the audience somewhere, I think. Ellen, are you in the audience? Standing over there, or sitting over there? Stand up. She's, she did the goon badge. Um, so here I've got, a, I mean, I've got a picture of the CAD software drawing it. I have a picture of the prototype if you want to see it come up afterwards. A picture of the stencil. You all know how surface mount electronics, you put the stencil on, you put the solder paste on, you put the parts on with pick and place, you run it through the hot oven and it melts to the board. Okay, we're in process of fixing the video issue. Yay, yay. 
So, um, a couple things... Thank you to all seven of you. <laughs> a couple of things I want you to notice that are, are little uh, Easter eggs that are kind of my personal signature on stuff. For those of you who've played in my games before, you know that I like to put things in that have absolutely nothing to do with the contest at all, but are just kind of weirdness that is my personality. Um, first of all, only two of the badges are identical, similar in design, and that is the vendor and the speaker badge. You will also notice that they are diametrically opposite of each other. That's my little comment on the fact that the vendors are actually here to sell you something and make money. The speakers are here to give you knowledge for free. So they are actually diametrically opposed to each other. That's just symbology. Okay. Uh, how many of you guys have the badge with the Alfred Hitchcock head in it? How many of you noticed that's what that was? How many of you now just looked down at your badge and realized you have that badge? <laughs> Yeah, so one of the badges, if you flip it upside down, has the silhouette of Alfred Hitchcock in it. How many of you have the Pac-Man ghost on your badge? I, I know more of you than this have this, so I only see a few hands. So there's just little stuff like that embedded throughout. So take a look at your badge. You might find something interesting in the design that you had not noticed before. You may have noticed on the back that there are some interesting numbers and symbols and things. Those are part of the badge challenge that is currently running. Um, I know some people have solved certain parts of the badge challenge. However, uh, due to the thumb drive issue that we were just talking about and the reason that I was late coming here is that we've uh, had a little security issue with uh, getting some files to the defcon.org site, which is where a lot of the stages that will allow you to progress in the game are going to go. Um, those should be up within the hour. I believe Neil's actually still back there working on it. And he's So he'll have that up. So I think we're going to... Try switching out here. How many of you have seen every single type of badge with your badge at this point? Just a few of you. How many of you have seen probably half? How many of you have plugged your badge into a serial terminal and looked and seen the output? Cool. Yeah. At this point, since it's Friday morning and this is opening ceremonies, to have that many people have already done that much is pretty amazing. How many of you have soldered the headers onto the board already? Make noise. How many of you are going to go do that? All right. How many of you are going to do that here? All right. So if you go to the Hardware Hacking Village, ironically, Russ and I actually started the Hardware Hacking Village. I'll give you a little bit of back history on that for those of you who aren't aware. At the time I was working for Parallax, Ken actually donated a bunch of robot kits that I brought with me to DEF CON many years ago. And I walked from one end of this conference to the other with all of these crowds and everything, and I said, who wants to build a robot? Follow me. And I started at one end, and I walked to the other. And by the time I got to the contest area, I had a trail of about 50 people behind me. We didn't have a room. We didn't have anything, uh, any place to go. We went into the contest area and sat on the floor in a circle. And I stood in the middle, and I taught an impromptu class on how to build a basic robot. And that's how the Hardware Hacking Village started. The reason I'm telling you that story, especially for, because so many of you raised your hands, this is your first DEF CON. That's the kind of thing that we love to have happen at DEF CON. That's how you become a part of this community. That's how the community continues to grow. I hope that you realize that the badges this year were designed intentionally to be a development platform, something to, to pique your curiosity and your interest. For those of you who are straight up coders, You've got that multi-core processor. Go see what you can do with it. You can program for it in a language called Spin, which is very similar to Python. You can program for it in assembly, for those of you who are real men. Uh, uh. Or women. Or real women. women. There's a story behind that. I'll tell you. Do we have video? Yeah. All right, should I go back? Do over. <laughs> we'll go really fast. Welcome. Welcome. Hi, I'm Ryan. Hello. This is Russ. <laughs> we don't need no stinking badges. Sorry. Yeah, there's that 5.30 in the morning thing. Uh, general stuff. Um, we already talked about that. There's uh, some of the original sketches I was doing. Uh, you can see the one on uh, the right has got the Alfred Hitchcock hit and it's got the lock pick and the disc and stuff like that. Uh, you'll notice that there's a congruent uh, design to where the circuit layout is. That was to facilitate uh, that wonderfully tight schedule for production of the badges that we had. 
Um, here's just a close-up of some of the concept art that I was doing on my computer, and I think I was doing that in GIMP. Yay, open source software, give it a hand. <laughs> We're going to go blank again. It's not my fault, I swear. Challenge accepted. Challenge accepted. We're really usually not this dis... Actually, things have gone relatively smoothly for this, for, for DEF CON. How many of you guys have started messing with the network? Oh, weak. Come on, make noise on that one at least. Oh, I'm a DEF CON. <laughs> Those are the only ones that brought their laptops that have connected. How many of you are not connecting to a damn thing? <laughs> <laughs> they fear you, right? We are the keyboard samurai, right? The keyboard cowboy. Sorry. There's a picture of one of the prototypes, um, that, uh, if you wanted to see what they look like, nice and square. There's the uh, silk screen that I was talking about. Uh, there's some of the production pictures that uh, Ken sent over to me. This is in the, uh, the Rockland facility there uh, with Parallax. Uh, this is them putting together boxes and boxes and boxes of your badges, because we made more badges this year than we ever have before. Not a single person should leave this conference with a paper badge this year. Please clap for that. With, with one caveat. We actually have goons walking around with paper badges because we didn't get enough for ourselves. That's how we roll. Yeah. You're always first. How many of you had paper badges in the past? Yeah, so you know what we've been through in the past. To say that we fabricated in the United States Nobody's walking away with a paper badge. One more time, give a hand to Parallax and to this guy. So, uh, this picture is to show, this year we have a new, a new badge type. It's called the Artist Badge. It's the first year that we've had it. Jeff came to me and he said, we really need something for the guys that are doing the artwork, the musicians, and things like that. So you will see some people walking around. With, uh, with these badges, so it is a legitimate badge, not a fake or forged badge, like some people have already been accused of. Um, by the way, uh, I'm not condoning this, however, I have this discussion with Jeff about what do we do when people try and, and knock off the badge, get a fake badge, or elevate privilege. And we're like, well, if it's lame, we chastise them. And if it's cool, we reward them. <laughs> but you didn't hear that from me. Um, there's a close-up of, instead of the sketch, uh, I'm trying to show the progression from the artwork uh, forward into, um, you can see the Alfred Hitchcock head in that one. I just like that one. Here's um, a sampling of the badges. How many of you noticed that there are more than one human variant this year? Yeah? Yeah? You know why that is, right? That's to make you guys talk to each other. How many people and make noise on this one, have gone up to somebody and said, let me scan your badge, and stood there holding your badge facing someone else. <laughs> you think that was an accident? And do you think that there's a reason that maybe you have to stand there for a minute or two and stare this other person in the face and maybe break out of your shell and, and talk to somebody else and not your shoes? Hey, Ryan. Do you know how long it takes me to get from one end of the conference area to the other now? I'm just saying, maybe a side effect you hadn't thought of. Yeah. It's a great side effect, because now how many people have met, have met you? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I want you all to stop Russ in formal line and say, we want to scan one after the other. I want a now serving Russ Rogers sign above his head. Uh, there, that was a picture I took to show scale, because uh, when I sent some of the first pictures to Jeff, he was like, that thing's like two feet long, and I was like, no, so here's, here's a picture of it in my hand. He's, he's been using the wrong things to measure again. <laughs> he's like, that thing's microscopic. 
uh, open source firmware uh, object files written. Uh, Chip actually wrote one of the uh, of the object files. The others were mostly written by John, and then I think one other one other. Oh, something interesting. Go in and look at the files on the libraries, especially you guys who are coders and know what a pain in the ass it is uh, with pseudo random. Uh, how many of you understand what I mean when I say that? You know, dealing with random numbers. Go read the comments in the object for doing the random number generation. You'll find it very interesting. Um, by the way, you have all those object files on your on your DVD. We will actually release the actual badge code after the conference. Um, I've, I've issued a challenge. The gauntlet's kind of been thrown down. If you're a good programmer, you should actually be able to reproduce the, the effects of the badge with the libraries that we gave you, but I'm not giving out that source code until after the conference is over. A lot of info already on the web. I already put the, the, the Ken has that up. Uh, badge game. There's crypto throughout the con. I did something a little different this year. So Joe Grant, who is a very good friend of mine and who I've been called by several of the other goons for the past couple of days as a, as a friendly jab. Uh, uh, when Joe did the, uh, the badge contest, we had a relatively low number of people doing the badge hacks. I don't know whether it's because they didn't want to do a hardware hack while at the con or if the bar was too high for people who didn't have a lot of hardware experience. Um, so the reason we did the non-electronic badge last year was Jeff wanted to kind of test me out, I think, because he had always seen Mystery Challenge and it was always very popular. But he wanted to see how if it scaled. And so when we did the badge challenge last year as a non-electronic badge, I had big shoes to fill because you guys all came here expecting an electronic device and you got a piece of titanium. Um, granted, we did affect the, the global price of titanium in that particular stock for a week. Uh, <laughs> Um, but the, the reception by you guys was very good because you're all, you know, very smart, very bright people and you saw the intellectual challenge and, and you had fun with it. So I was like, well, damn, how do we combine those two things? How do we get the best of both worlds? How do I get this puzzle game and the electronic hack stuff and, and synthesize it together? This year, the badge challenge is a two-fold contest. Those of you out there that want to do nothing more than do a hack to the badge, you're welcome to do that. Those of you who want to do nothing but the mystery side or the puzzles or the stuff you see in the hall as a casual type thing while you're just here, while you're standing in line, while you're out having some coffee or whatever, you're welcome to do that. However, in order to submit badge hacks this year, you have to find somebody who has broken the crypto of the badge game this year. And the badge game people, in order to submit, have to have a hardware hack along with their submission. And I did that to force you guys to network and to find somebody else that's doing it or to branch out. So I don't know how well that's going to work. We're going to see. It's really going to be based on you guys. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? Yes? No? Clapping? Do you like that? At the very end of the day, if nothing else, even if that just falls apart and crashes and burns and goes to hell, I don't care. As long as you guys had fun and you talked to somebody and hopefully learned something. Thank you. Uh, how many of you have taken a close look at your lanyard? Yeah. So I got, I got an email this morning. So the first successful decryption of lanyards has happened. Uh, the, the plural usage of the word lanyards was intentional there. That might be a little hint. And I may have cropped this picture, interestingly enough, at a particular point. How many of you noticed something that you didn't notice before? And now I see all these people taking their lanyards off now and looking at them. Huh? Remember that whole I gotta talk to other people thing? Hint, 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 hint. How many of you have seen uh, Mars' wonderful artwork that's out in the, in the hallway there? Yeah. <laughs> Consequently, so Mars is one of our artists. Uh, she's actually sick and wasn't able to come here. So for the cameras, can you guys give Mar a rousing, loud yell? <laughs> So I spent many, many nights on a desk that I, I, I literally built a new desk just to prep for DEF CON this year. I just went to Home Depot, bought a bunch of 2x4s and plexiglass, and I built a desk that's got three monitors across the top, two monitors embedded into the desktop itself, and I've got all the machines up on the top rack just so I could have this workspace. I can't tell you how many nights I would come home from work, 
I would log into this machine with Skype with Neil, this machine with Skype with Mar, and maybe some a third person, and we would coordinate all this stuff. So Mar would do things like send me this wonderful art, and I'm sure you've all noticed by now the, the crypto that's on the throat. So I'm, I'm the person embedding the crypto into these, um, but I'm, I'm standing on the shoulders of the great work of people like Neil and Mar. So if you guys give them a hand one more time. With the exception of the microcontroller design floor, that's all me. So I hope you guys enjoy that one. By the way, there's your photo op to help you out for those of you who don't want to sit on the floor and try and draw that up. That's exactly the same crypto that is on the floor. I'll leave it up there for about 10, 15 seconds because I know some of you were trying to copy it. I figured I'd do you a, do you a solid. How many of you also noticed that on the DVD I gave you the actual crypt text of one of the codes? Yeah, so you don't have to sit there and type it in because I'm a big believer of I want the game to be fun, not asinine, stupid, busy work that I've got to sit in front of a sign and write down numbers for an hour. So, everybody good? I'm going to go forward? No? Yes? Yeah, good. How many of you have seen the sign jet? I know they were just going up when we came in here. Have it, yes, no? Make some noise if you've seen these. How many of you have taken a closer look? Mmm. Look at the building on the left. Ooh. Hint, 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 hint. Final turn into packs. <laughs> Sunday morning in the contest area. Those of you working on the badge puzzle. By the way, this is a black badge event this year. It just says it was last year. For those of you new to DEF CON, what that means is a black Uber badge is free entrance into DEF CON for the rest of your life. But it also is more the prestige of saying, I won a contest at DEF CON. They are a big deal and they're very coveted. I believe Johnny Long just auctioned one off for his charity that went for like $35,000. Yeah. By the way, you're welcome, Johnny. That was my personal badge. <laughs> I, got, I hope you guys enjoy the con. And uh, that's all I have for you this morning, but I will take questions if you have any. And I think Russ will come up here and talk to me too. So thank you guys for being here. Without you guys, we wouldn't have the con. I do have one other minor announcement. Uh, my Mystery Challenge teams, we will do an official kickoff in the contest area as soon as I get a chance to run up to my room and back down because i got to get some stuff. Uh, do we have we have mics? Do you guys want to ask some questions? Do you want to do some Q and A? Yeah, if you yeah. want to ask questions, just line up behind the go, mic, go grab and we'll mic. just take them in order, please. How much time do we have, Rose? Half hour. We doing good? Yes. Well, half hour till we start the documentary. So. Yeah. How long is my badge supposed to do this after seeing Dark Tangent? <laughs> <laughs> So, um, when you see a goon, you'll notice that your badge goes into kind of a scramble mode. When you see Jeff, myself, or a few other certain people around the conference, it can be up to several hours. Um, have you turned the batteries off, or has it gone into a dormant state? Okay, I'll, I'll take a look at it. I, I can't remember what I said Jeff's out of it. It's like some stupid number. It's gonna, like, if you see yeah. Jeff, DT, it's going to be a long time. Yeah, you probably want to avoid Jeff. Yeah. yeah. That's our way of cutting you know what, him it, out. It's funny. It. I was explained. It's totally, this is going to, please, well, it's on film. What the hell? Jeff's going to get mad at me anyway. I totally, <laughs> when I first told Jeff, yeah, your badge is going to infect other people. And he goes, people are going to run away from me. And I was like, no, they're going to seek you out as a trophy prize. They want to be infected by Jeff Moss. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. Um, how many human badges did you create? How many year quantity or variants? Uh, quantity, quantity. Quantity, it's, it's roughly 15,000, I believe. Uh, Ken, is that correct? 15,000? Yeah. About 15,000. Great. How many what? You guys have to figure that one out on your own. That's part of the game. 10,057. Yeah. <laughs> 10,057 badges, no. Great job on the badges. Thank that's, you. That's Thank really you. wonderful. I've been working on some uh, crypto hardware, trying to build stuff. And so my question is, before I waste my time looking for this, has someone done an RSA, distributed RSA uh, engine decryptor 
I don't thing. know if that's been done for the propeller yet or not. I know it's capable of it. Um, okay. right. uh, my intention after the conference, actually, I've got a bunch of pet projects that I want to that I want to do. Um, I've got some encryption stuff that I plan to do with the propeller, especially because of that interesting random that I told you guys about earlier. You know, that's kind of a that's a really cool thing for those of you who know what kind of a problem that is with pseudo random stuff and things like that. So yeah, I'm trying to make like a cheap go, H go H read, HSM and make a go read fix. the code comments. By the way, something else interesting about uh, the object files that you'll see, there's actually a font for doing schematic in the documentation. I think that's kind of cool. So. Is the code base on the uh, badges tied one to one to the different physical badges? I will not answer that question at this point in time. That was a nice try, though. I noticed that uh, the goon badge had an extra chip on the badge. Uh, was I seeing something not? Um. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm coming clean. One of those problems we had. We had a contract, I believe, with FTDI. Is that correct, Ken? So FTDI was was it FTDI with the bug boost? No. He's shaking his head. No. no. We had we had, we had an issue with the bug boost that we took care of. That's all I'm going to say about that. And those of you who are electronic people, you look at it and you'll understand. Uh, sir, you mentioned the symbology was important, and I had a question. Sure. Is the Egyptian pan uh, the pantheon of the deities? Is there any relevance in the hierarchy? Or so. That? The, for those of you who were here last year and saw that we're kind of carrying through, oh, by the way, how many of you heard about the DEF CON comic book that we're working on? Yes? No? So we're actually working on a DEF CON comic book that we just didn't get done in time for CON, so we're going to actually release that after DEF CON. Um, this is kind of laying the groundwork for the foundation of this mythical hacker group called the Brotherhood of Horus that you guys found about, uh, out about last year. <laughs> Did I say whores? <laughs> Hor us, H O R U S. Hors are us. Like never mind. That uh, that's a different group. That's going to be at the three hundred three party. That's tonight. when you get infected by DT. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the the impetus behind that is is it, for those of you who are my one on one talk, you know, I like to think about stuff in kind of a philosophical way. I am a big believer in the fact that hackers have existed long before computers. We had Pythagoras. We've had guys like Alan Turing, who had a birthday. Hint, hint, your lanyards were kind of an homage to the Turing tapes. Um, so the whole Egyptian thing is not like, ooh, I'm into Egyptian mythology as much as it was I'm into the aspects of different historical periods that represent what I consider hackers to be. So that's kind of where that came from. And if you follow the game, you'll see that there's kind of a bleed over from that um, as far as the specific gods, I will, okay, fine, I'll give you guys a hint. The floor rotunda that's out in the front that nobody has broken the crypto on yet, there is a significance to the position of the eye of, it's either the eye of Ra or the eye of Horus, depending on which way it's turned. That's significant. Um, that's all I'm going to give you on that one. And by the way, it's, it's, it's a mathematical symbol. I am a mathematician. I have a degree in mathematics. I was really into, for a while, the, oh, wow, this is cool, this is fractions and math, yada, yada. Go ahead. Um, hi, this is my first DEF CON. Welcome. Where are you from? Seattle. Seattle. You say you came quite a way. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft country. Um, for those of us who are just learning this, this material and just getting into the security industry, is there a good starting spot? for trying to figure out all this stuff that you Did you recommend? by chance make it to the one-on-one talks yesterday? Yes, I did. Okay, so that's what the whole point of my one-on-one talk was. It was just kind of a core dump of this is my personal opinion. Uh, everyone here, if you ask them that, you'll get a different answer. I would say find some avenue of it that you're interested in. Is it embedded system security? Well, no, I meant is specifically it? about the crypto challenge. About the challenge? I don't know how to describe what I do to somebody who hasn't been through it before. And, I, and I, I'm not... I don't... I'm not trying to dodge your question, if you ask, find a mystery challenge team that has competed before and say, tell me how messed up in the head this guy really is. <laughs> for example, for example, McMaster Carr knows me as the guy that always calls up and says, I need left-handed, I need left-handed screws, you know, that kind of stuff. And they're like, why the hell do you need that, you know? Um, one year they got books that had uh, micro SD cards embedded in the cover of the book. They had to rip the book apart to get the micro SD card out. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that I like to do. I will say that the badge game itself, the crypto is relatively easy to do. 
once you figure out what the hell it is you're supposed to do. And that's kind of pulling off of the, are you an observant, are you a hacker? Because what happens when you're doing an attack on a site or something, or a pen test, you know? You gotta do information gathering, you gotta kind of banner the machines, you gotta try and figure out what it is you're even attacking, because you don't know what you're walking into a lot of times. That's, the, that's how I like to run my games. Because I think it's more fun for people like you who, I'm, this is gonna sound really bad, you guys are a little bit above the bar of the average Joe out there. You are. Look, take the cross, look across, look around you. The people that are here are the people that are interested in security. They tend to be more aware of how things are around them. Because a lot of people, security is an afterthought if it's a thought at all. I'm going to write some code, and then we're going to, like, oh, we'll deal with security afterwards. And nothing, I mean, oh, DNS, anybody? <laughs> okay. Anyway. And then good, a, thanks for the question. A follow up question, if I could. Sure, go ahead. Um, you said that you're going to post the source code and all that for the actual badge challenge after the competition. Sure. Mm -hmm. Will you post um, like some sort of write up explaining how the solutions were solved? I will. I will. I think uh, we will probably do a cross post on Parallax's forums as well as on my lostboy.net, and then I don't know if Jeff wants to put that up probably on the DEF CON sites as well. We can do that. Okay. Ha and by the way. So a bunch of people, you guys are awesome. You guys are the coolest community ever. After the badge challenge last year, some people created a wiki. In fact, if you, if you uh, go Google for it, last year's badge challenge has been documented to death on the web by people who went through the blood, sweat, and tears of going through all of that stuff last year. So jump on the wiki and, and check it out. That will actually help you understand how messed up he is in the head, too. Um, you know, and it'll help you with the challenges this year because they are everywhere. I mean, I am. I thought he had kind of wormed his way into every part of the con with this challenge already, and it's, I can't turn around without seeing his clues and hints and little bits of information everywhere. So um, you're going to haphazardly end up soaking up some of the challenge, whether you try to or not. And, and the hope is that you guys have fun, but you, you, know, you learn something you didn't before. I learned something in doing these for you guys. I, I mean, I use it as an excuse to research some crazy weird stuff. So, yes. If you're really enjoying really random puzzles, do you have any other recommendations for the other 361 days of the year? I'm sorry? <laughs> Say that one more time. Bring, in the, about bring the mic down mind. a little bit. It's, yeah, it doesn't sure. bite unless oh, well. you rub it the right way. It's... <laughs> the microphone. God, red card. All of you. Jeez. Sorry, she's, she's all embarrassed. I'm sorry. So, if you really enjoy really random and somewhat bizarre puzzles, is there anything else that we can do for the other 361 days of the year? So, there's a lot of, of interesting stuff. Uh, I wasn't going to say this publicly yet, but I'm thinking I might as well do it. I was actually thinking about doing a like mystery challenge throughout the year, where whenever I get something done, I'm going to put it up online, so that uh, kind of like, you know, there's like hack-a-day type stuff. I thought about doing like, you know, here's your puzzle of the month, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> there are other sites though I mean how many of you are familiar with Martin Gardner I'm going to keep giving props to Martin Gardner if you don't know who Martin Gardner is go look him up he is a pioneer and a god to me he's a great resource I mean, he's he since passed but um, if you like puzzles and this kind of stuff go, go look up Martin Gardner stuff I think you, it's a good starting point stuff to look at thank you sure. any other questions Last chance. You can yell bad things at me if you want. Where's your My Little Buddy doll you had yesterday? Where's what? My Little Buddy doll. The Servo? Uh, I got two people, so <laughs> well, who was it? Oh, Tom Servo. How many of you know who Tom Servo is? Yeah. So you may have noticed that I kind of like Tom Servo. You'll notice this strange outfit I'm wearing is actually Dr. Clayton Forrester. Uh, yeah, from Deep 13 and Gizmonics Institute. It kind of goes along with Mystery Challenge this year. If you want to see Tom Servo and Crow T Robot, they are actually in the contest area. And someone else said something back here. Can I show this? Which slide? That one? You guys want another photo op on that one so you don't have to try it right now? I debated whether or not to put that one on the CD, and I was like, eh, I gotta be a bastard at least once. <laughs> so. Yes? How long do the battery, on which? On the, 
So I had one of the badges running at home for well over a week on a single set of batteries, depending on what code you leave running in it. Now, if you go ramp up the processor, by the way, you can actually tap into the PLLs, uh, for those of you who know what that means, it, at different levels for the different processors that are on that chip, which is really cool. So it actually uh, throttles itself down and then back up, depending on what it's doing to help conserve battery. So. Uh, so, I'm sorry I don't have a uh, real question to ask, but I can't help but make this plug to those that are looking for puzzles to do throughout the year. Um, to anyone that's heard of NotPron, uh, it is an amazing resource of puzzles, just like the badge challenge that will keep you occupied for hours upon hours upon cool. hours. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Last chance, guys, before... Uh, I will, oh, by the way, I, personally, I hate Twitter. The only time I use it is around DEF CON. My Twitter account, by the way, if you follow me, will only get tweets around DEF CON, and it will go dormant for the rest of the time. People who know me can attest to that. If you want to do the puzzles, I will start releasing hints probably sometime this evening and then about every couple of hours. Um, and the hints will get more and more egregious. So I don't want to like give it away because then it, it loses all the fun for you guys. I'll also, if you guys solve something, don't ruin it for someone else because part of the fun is figuring out on your own. Don't be like, uh, I'm the cool guy. I just did this awesome crypto and be like, shut up. It took you a while to do it. Let them get a chance to do it. So just, you know, be cool about it. Help people if they ask, but don't be like, here's the answer. Go ahead. Assuming that there are going to be any leftover badges at the end of the conference, what are you doing with them? So, I've discussed this with Jeff, and I don't know if he's discussed it with Russ. We've actually debated, and I don't know if the official decision has been made, we've discussed actually selling those at a reduced price at either Saturday night or Sunday. Do you know the answer on that, Russ? Yeah, the current plan, as I understand it, if there are badges left, we are willing to sell them at the end of the conference. Where would people look for those? Um, I don't know yet. Um, it w again, we're kind of flying by the seat of our pants on this one. Uh, we weren't sure if we were going to have enough badges. I haven't seen a reg line this morning, so I don't know what's happening there. Um, I do know how many badges we sold yesterday and how many we have left. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how many we have left. But um, I believe we'll have some left over. The intent is to sell them, is my understanding. And I would imagine that it will be out in the rotunda area somewhere where Reg was, where Schwag Booth was, that kind of thing. But I can't guarantee that. We have to pick a spot that's going to be most conducive. All right. If it's not there, our only other choice is probably uh, Jinx because he sells a lot of our stuff. Well, no, Freaky does now too. So okay. it, vendor area or the rotunda, we'll get out more information. We'll, we'll, we'll put it out there. Yeah. Like on Twitter or? Uh, I, yeah, I'll tweet it. I'll uh, uh, so on Twitter, I'm 1057. Hashtag 105. It's not a zero, it's an O. And there are other people out there spoofing my Twitter account already. <laughs> Just so you know. This is a hacker con. I expect it to happen as part of the game. If you're too unobservant to notice that, you deserve to get owned. <laughs> Any other questions? Comments? <clears throat> no. The water bottle can Okay, that's things. new. It's... <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. I, I, don't, I, don't, know what you're I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, can't tell you. Yeah. You'll have, you have to solve that puzzle on your own. Okay, so again, this is DEF CON 20. Can you guys make a little more noise for me before we close this out? I have one final, I have one final comment, and then uh, unless Russ has anything, we'll probably call it uh, call it quits on the opening ceremony. So I'd like to officially open DEF CON for you guys, DEF CON 20. I'm gonna parrot something that was said yesterday at DEF CON 101. Don't be a douche. Don't be a douche. Don't be a douche. That's a Take waste of time. Thing, if you, for those of you who don't know. Um, have fun and talk to some new people. Break out of your shell. Meet some people. There are a lot of really smart people here. I learn something from you guys every year. Go and have fun. We have whole minutes left, so I think I'd ask, how, how what do you get the manufacturing price of the boards down to? Uh, I don't know if Jeff wants to release that. Uh, leave that up to him. So it's not really my place to, to give out that information. Jeff makes all those final decisions. 
Um, if he decides to release that, then it'll go up on the DEF CON site probably and, and maybe at the Parallax site as well. Until Jeff makes that call, I'm not really in a position to say. Um, some of those questions were asked on the documentary. Uh, whether they make it through our editing process or not, um, you know, we'll find out later. I but will tell you we spent more on this badge than we've spent on any badge in the past. Because we care. Because we care. Oh, get, I'm going to make a real quick point here. Get out of the mindset that when you go to a conference, you're buying the, the badge as a product. You're paying for the conference. The fact that you get a kick-ass badge is like, you know, a, That's a great. bonus. It's a bonus. You know, I mean, if you look around you at what it takes to put on DEF CON, look at how many people are just in this track. We got three speaker tracks going on right now. Oh my God, we have the director of the NSA at DEF CON this year. I'm going I'm to say that again. The first time in history, the, the director of the NSA is at DEF CON. That should blow your mind. Don't scan his badge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else before we let you guys go for the day to like, release you into the wild? Go forth. All right. Welcome to DEF CON. Uh,